All right, how's everybody doing tonight, all right? Hello, Facebook, good to see you out there on YouTube if you're watching it later. So, how many know that God is with us? Amen. And that he is for us. Amen. And um, there's nothing better than to have God with us. Amen. So, hey, why don't we, why don't we just stand up and uh, just, let's just lift our hands to the Lord tonight and just exalt the Lord. Amen. Just begin to lift your own voices to the Lord. Tell him how great he is, how awesome. He loves to hear the praises of his people. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you tonight, God. You're so amazing, so awesome in every way, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, holy and righteous God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Bless you tonight, Father. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Holy Spirit. Come and move in this place tonight. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. We long for you. We desire you. Come on, just lift your voices. Come on, hunger after God tonight. He's so good. Taste and see how good he is. Amen. Oh, praise you, Lord. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We got some testimonies in the house tonight. Amen. Aren't we all a testimony of the Lord? Amen. So. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. How's that for you, amen? I believe in signs and wonder. I have resurrection power. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on, declare it. My praise belongs to you forever. Yeah. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. Through Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come on, how many have Jesus written on their heart tonight? Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed with water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Do you believe it tonight? Our God will finish what He started. Yeah. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified This is my testimony, this is my testimony yeah. Come on, it goes like this If I'm not dead, then you're not done Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Amen. Because greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Yeah. Oh, greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. And greater things are still to come. This is my testimony from death to life, cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify, by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified, oh this is my testimony, this is my testimony, hallelujah, come on, praise him tonight, 
Look to somebody and give them an air high five tonight and say, I know God is with you. Amen. Greater things are still to come. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that tonight? That we're not, we're not done. God's not done. Greater things are still to come. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, he is the alpha. He is the omega, isn't he? He's the beginning and the end. He's faithful to finish what he started in you. How many can remember the day God got started in you? <laughs> How many can remember the day God started a fire? He started a journey in your heart. Amen. And he's not finished yet. And, uh, and so, God, we're submitting ourselves to you. We're going to follow you, Lord, not just yesterday, not just today, but all the days of our life, God. And we want to live for you because, God, we know that you can take anything. If you believe this tonight, just, just, just declare whatever is ugly, whatever is, is messy, whatever is feeling like a grave, <laughs> Believe it tonight. He turns graves into gardens. I'm so thankful that this song was introduced and that this is just a powerful testimony. This is, God, you turn my grave into a garden. You turn, you make beauty out of ashes. You turn my mourning into dancing. Amen? So believe that tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> Cause I search the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough and you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Come on, do you believe it tonight? I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, yeah, because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, oh, and there's not a place. Your mercy and grace won't find me again. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. And nothing is better than you. Come on, declare it tonight. powerful declarations you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who cares try that again come on you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. Cause there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, sing that chorus. Lord, there's nothing.
Come on, another set of declarations tonight. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. Come on, you can turn. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. One more time. You turn graves into garden. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the There's nothing better than you. Come on. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, tell them tonight. Right to God. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Come on, oh, we worship, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we're coming back to you. There's nothing better, there's nothing greater than you. You know, it's so funny is last night I was talking with Emmanuel, you know, we were sharing from our podcast last night and just uh, how he brought up in Revelation 2, how we can be so busy for the Lord and we can be doing so many things for God and yet we can still fall out of love. We can still fall out of love. We can be rising in our in our successes, we can be feeling successful, we can be feeling good, we can be feeling like we're on top of the world, and yet still be disconnected from the one who found us to begin with, amen? And so tonight, why don't you just give it all back to the Lord tonight? I think when we start surrendering and giving it all back to Him, there's something that begins to change, and it's our perspective. We don't see ourselves anymore, we see Him. And if we see ourselves, we see ourselves in him, and we see this beautiful relationship that we just can't, we just can't walk away from. So let's just give him glory tonight for all that he's done. I give you glory for all you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Let's sing that verse again. I give you glory for all you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Come on, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready. 
for whatever you want to do. In your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. In your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never In every season, your grace has been enough. Hallelujah. And I'm believing that the best is yet to come. Yes. The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus. Oh, the best is yet to come. Come on, we long for your presence, God. In your presence is an open door, yeah. We want you, Lord, like never before. Oh, it's your presence. In your presence is an open door.
just hunger for the Lord tonight. He's your open door. Not a job. He's your breakthrough. He is your breakthrough. The person of God, the person of Christ. His presence in your life. Just invite him. Say, come Holy Spirit. Come, come here, Lord. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, come. And come, Lord Jesus, come. Sing Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, come. And Holy Spirit, come. Because your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Like never before. I just am sensing this tonight, just in the songs that I picked, and just allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to me tonight, you know, and we we sing this, uh, the greater things are still to come, and we just said that your presence is an open door. And and then in this song that I'm going to sing next, it's this guy, I believe that God wants to do a new thing in our life, but then I, I picked this song and it says, do it again. And the Lord just spoke to me, and the Holy Spirit just said, I'm going to do it again, but it might look different. I'm the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I, I parted the Red Sea, right, for Moses? And the it of that was not the Red Sea. The it of that was deliverance and a rescue. So I'm going to rescue again. I'm going to deliver again. But it may look different because you're in a different place, because you're in a different set of circumstances. America's in a different set of circumstances. And so God says, just like I moved 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 2,000 years ago. I'm doing the same things. It just looks different because you're different. You're unique. You're my creation. And I'm bringing all of my faithfulness and all of my power 
in all of my wisdom, in all of my might, I'm bringing into your life and into your set of circumstances right now. And you trust me in this. I, I believe the Lord is saying, trust me in this, that I will do it again. I will do it again. I will bring an anointing like you've never seen before. I will heal. I will bring signs and wonders like I've never done before. Because I want to heal again. Because I want to save again. Because I want to give hope again. Because I want to restore again. Because I want to bring joy again. Because I want to hear praise again. Oh God, do it again we pray, Lord. Do it again we pray, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And walking around these walls Who I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come. Oh, I know that the battle's won. But you have never failed me yet. And your promise still stands. Oh, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness, and I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. How many can say that tonight? Cause I know the night won't last And your word will come to pass Oh, my heart will sing your praise again Cause Jesus, you're still enough Yes, you are so keep me within your love and my heart will sing your praise again oh yeah cause your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Oh, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. And I'm still in your hands. Cause this is my
Cause your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. Cause this is my confidence. my confidence you've never failed me yet mm. Father tonight you made a statement in your word that says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I believe that that scripture has an implication in every circumstance of our life. When the moments feel so just they just feel like they're just caving in on us that the circumstances the winds just like tonight the just trees falling wind falling hail coming it just feels like are we going to survive this and we can come back and remember that God you so loved us that you gave us Jesus and there's no weapon formed against us that will prosper there's there's nothing that can separate us from that love not even death itself because we shall rise again in eternity we have a, a hope we have a hope and so God when we face whatever we're going to face tomorrow and the next day and in the next season Help us to remember that we've seen you move. We've seen you move mountains. We've seen you, and we believe that you'll do it again. It may look different. It may feel different. It may seem different. But it's the same God who rescued the people of Israel. It's the same God who gave dreams to Joseph. It is the same God who anointed King David and Solomon to build a mighty temple. It is the same God that gave words to Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. It is the same God who, who, who filled Peter on the day of Pentecost and thousands were saved. It is the same God who healed the beggar at the temple courts. It is the same God who gave revelation to the apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. And it is the same God who worked in Chuck Finney. It's the same God who worked in Billy Graham. It is the same God who can work through each one of us if we would just call on his name tonight if we would just call on his name Jesus could you do that with me just as we close this time of worship and prayer just call on the name of Jesus come on come on our nation needs Jesus our government needs Jesus this election needs Jesus it doesn't need more of Biden or more of Trump it needs more of Jesus amen oh hallelujah we don't need any more hatred. We don't need any more anger. We don't need any more strife. We don't need any more division. We need Jesus. Bring us together in the name of Jesus, under the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Come on. Just for the next couple minutes before Adrian comes, come on, just begin to speak the name of Jesus, what that name means.
pray with me tonight. I can't stand up because the camera's going to cut my head off. So let me just pray together tonight, all right? Father, we come to you on behalf of our great, our great nation. And we just pray, Lord, that you would begin to just move in a mighty way across every state as this election draws near. God, it is about you having your way. It says that you set kings and you remove kings. And so we're trusting that in this election, that God, that you will bring the right candidate into the house, into the Oval Office, and we're trusting that you're going to have your way. And so we pray tonight, Lord, for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and we lift them up to you. We pray for a blessing upon their homes, upon their families. Uh, God, I pray that you would keep them well and safe physically. We just come and pray that you would just touch their hearts and fill them with your Holy Spirit if they're willing and able. God, we pray the same for Mike Pence, our Vice President, and our President Donald Trump. We just pray that you would bless these men, pour out your favor upon them, and bless their families, keep them safe and well. And we just trust, God, all four of these candidates, even though at times they may feel like enemies, God, we pray that we are all for this nation, and we want to see God bless America once again. And so we pray in Jesus' name that it would happen, that God, that you would do it again, that you would bless America again with a great revival, a great turning away from sin, a great turning away from hatred and strife and lawlessness and all of the things that have plagued our country, that we would begin to see healing upon all of the diseases and all of the illnesses such as heart disease, cancer, COPD, diabetes, the list goes on, all of the emotional disorders, anxiety and depression and and all of those things that go with it, autism, we just pray, God, that you would begin to set people free and that we would see a mighty outpouring of God's presence once again in this nation called the United States of America. And we just thank you for it, Lord. We pray for our church tonight. We pray that you would bless their homes, bless their families physically, strengthen those who are ill. For those who are battling emotionally, we pray that you would strengthen them in their hearts and in their souls. And for those that have decisions need to be, needing to be made in the coming days ahead, may you give them wisdom to know what it is that you want them to do. Help them see what way to walk. And we pray this all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. So Adrian's going to come here and... Uh, I invited her uh, a couple months back, just asked her, and we actually quite a few months before COVID hit, we had sat down and talked, and this, this material that she's going to present to us is material that is uh, on her heart, and she is con- super convinced and super convicted in her heart to share this with all of us, and I believe that if we tune in God is going to speak to us, encourage us, inspire us to live the kind of life that he created us for. Amen, Adrian. So we love our sister. Can you appreciate her coming in? And so come on up, Adrian. Hey everyone, hey everyone in Facebook land, it's so awesome to be here tonight, I had a tree come down in my yard today, so that was good, it was a neighbor's tree, so they get to clean it up, but I just mowed my lawn yesterday and it was so nice, you know, I mulched all the leaves and everything and it was green and and little OCD, so you know, you go pick up the few leaves that were still around and then today it's just a mess. 
I figured, well, I figured God made the mess. He can clean this one up, send another wind or something through. That'll work for me. I am, um, I'm very, uh, we're going to bounce in and out of scripture because all this stuff, when we talk about motivational stuff and motivational people and everything and, and um, it's all Bible. You know, the greatest, the greatest enemies of blessing and growth are character enemies. They're not like some big thing we've got to learn or some, they're everyday life stuff that, you know, in our pursuit to be like Jesus, to walk like Jesus and talk like Jesus, every success, we can call it principle, we can call it idea, we can call it whatever we want, is really the character and the nature of Jesus. And, and we, you can't be mean and ask God to bless you. That's a growth principle, believe it or not. <laughs> I heard somebody, Larry Randolph, he's a, a friend of mine, and he's, uh, he said this once. He was talking in, in a conference, in a Middle East conference we were having in Nashville. And he, he said, you know, when we talk about wanting the power of God, he said, why do, like when God wants to give it to us more than we want it, why do we not see it? And he said, maybe we need to be nicer to each other. He preached a whole message around that. You know, maybe we need to end contentions. Because you can't build a church, you can't build a family, you can't build a business, you can't build an organization with contentiousness in the ranks. Never going to happen. That's Christ-like, isn't it? is it not? See, tonight, I want to, we, we talked about potential, like if, if you've got to call this a title, it's got to be that your potential is in you, it's not in another person or a program. You know, two people can go and do the same program. They can learn the same information. One person, it can revolutionize their life and they can have great success. And the other person will walk away a little more informed and that's it. What, ha what is the difference? Is it the program or is it the operator? <laughs> Here we, we talk about... The course of the very different results, Catherine Kuhlman said two people can take the same soil, one will build a hut, and one will build a skyscraper. See, it's, it's something that excites me. We, we're always asking God to add to us, to add to us. God, if I just had this, then that would be all right. God, if you just added this to my life, I could be successful. And tonight, I want to show you that you have been sourced for success from the day you were created. God, in his infinite love for you, Put everything you need in you for a successful life the very moment that you were created or conceived. It's not about asking God to add, add, add. God doesn't want to add. He wants to birth. He wants to bring from the inside out the untapped potential, the unused gifts and talents that we have. He doesn't need to add one thing. You know, when we talk about these two people, now I'm trying not to preach, but I'm not doing a very good job so far, so just slow me down. 
When two people do the same program, can I tell you, the next day, it's not the night, it's not the program, it's not the learning, it's what they do with it the next day. See, it's not information they need. They need to learn, then they need to do, then they need to follow through. Isn't that the truth? If you have all this stuff in our hand, which we have got more knowledge, more information than we really know what to do with. I'm sorry, did, it, did I do that? If we, if we come and we decide that we are going to use, and I'm going to start to be a doer, which is scriptural, <laughs> and I'm going to put some stuff into practice, and I'm actually going to follow through. See, those two great weaknesses, <laughs> how many people have trouble with the discipline and the follow through? Anybody, can we have any honest people here tonight? Like we're all just about that. Do you know if we decided tonight, if we made a decision tonight that tomorrow when we get up, we are going to start to do and follow through on some areas in our life within a few months, it would look very different. You know, I knew a pastor in Australia who just took over a church in a country town and he said, you know what, I made a decision that for the next six, I don't know how many months it was, it wasn't long, that every day I was going to do everything I knew to do, pray fast, I was going to press in, I was going to do, I was going to be diligent to do everything within six months the church was in revival. If we would just realize it's not a magical solution, <laughs> it's actually the discipline and the follow through. See, I, I'm a visionary. I don't like those two words. I like in the beginning and it was. But see, the discipline and the follow-through is where your success lies and my success. I love, um, I love a lot of things tonight. I love all this stuff. Our first most important thought as we start tonight, as we start these next few weeks, is right here, right now, I am responsible for my life. I am responsible for the change I want. I am responsible, no one else. Not my spouse, not my friends, not my enemies. I can't blame anybody. Nobody can do it for me. I am responsible. You see, you know the old adage, you can't help what happens to you, but you can certainly decide what we're going to do with it. Well, tonight, wherever we are in every area of our life, I'm going to hand out some notes next week. We're going to start taking notes, and at the end, I want to talk about some growth plans. Next week, we're going to do some more on that because, you know, you don't just grow accidentally you grow on purpose all of life anything successful is done on purpose we don't just stumble into it I like uh, John Maxwell he stood up and said to thousands of people and he says it regularly he said I am responsible to you not for you you see Pastor Todd he can preach the greatest messages teach the greatest greatest sermons, the greatest teachings, he can be responsible to us, to feed us, but if we want to eat that stuff, guess what? That's up to us. He can never be responsible for us. Nobody is responsible for me except me. See, 
See, this is big kid stuff. <laughs> this is adulting. <laughs> this is taking responsibility. You know what? Guess what? You know, so tonight, maybe I'm broken, I can't pay my bills. Well, from tonight onwards, I'm going to start doing something about that. Maybe my relationships are really bad. Maybe I'm looking for breakthrough in certain areas. Can I tell you, when you start running towards God, breakthrough will come your way. But it's not going to happen while we stay in bed and just ask God for it and wish for it. Is that all right? <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but you know, like I said, we're adulting tonight. <laughs> He's responsible too, not for. You know, it's the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but what? <laughs> Can't make him drink. No way. Jesus said what? I set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He didn't say, I fed you from the table I set before you from the presence of your enemies. He said, I set the table. You want it, you go eat it. You want to look at it and just think how nice it is and how religious it is? That's fine, but it won't give you victory. You've got to go up and eat what's on the table. He said, I set it out for you. And then he said, you've got to go eat some. You've got to go to the table. My heart is always, I don't know about you, but I like to be challenged. I mean, I don't like it in the moment. You know, you know when somebody says something that your, your back just goes up. And you smile. And you're like, God bless you. But as you walk away, you think about it. Is there any truth to it? Come on. Nobody ever grew by being right all the time. See, I, I don't know about your personality, but my personality does not take hints very well. I mean, they go straight over. It's like sometimes I'm like, oh, God, I'm so tired. I can't make this. And then I'll open the Bible and I'll read the scripture. They that, what is it? They that um, can't walk with the footmen, how are you going to run with the horses or something? That's a challenge to me. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Because I like to see myself as a runner. See, over these next few weeks, I want to address you. I want you to look at you and I'll look at me, not as we think we are, not as we want to be, but as we are. You know, sometimes the person I want to be and think I am, I fall very short on that. And by pretending that I've got this, I'm never going to get it. So we look at ourselves as we really are. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a, a believer in people speaking into my life. Everybody needs mentoring. Everybody needs to be mentored and coached or whatever we want to call it, whatever the title. We're going to do one whole night on the conversation between Moses and Jethro, the mentor and his, his person, Moses. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs somebody to believe in them enough to point out the blind spots. And we all have them. I, I can, this is like a lame example, but I can remember the first time that uh, I was preaching this church in Australia. It's a fairly big church, and I was up there, and, and uh, the pastor 
when I'd finished, he told me I had to watch myself on video. I said, I'm not doing that. He said, yes, you will. I said, I'll take it home. He said, no, you won't because you still won't watch it. And he made me sit in his office and watch myself on video to learn. And do you know what? I fidgeted. Like, I, w- I move a lot, but I, this, I was doing this. Like, the whole time, the whole time. I was trying to get out of the habit of standing there with my hands in my pockets like I used to do. So I'm trying to put my hands out, but this hand needed to go somewhere. So it's like this. Now, if you had told me I did that, I would have never believed you. I didn't even know I was doing it. I said to him, did you see how much I fidgeted? He said, yep. Now, that's, that's like a, a, a small example. But do you know, sometimes I remember saying to somebody, oh, so-and-so, duh, 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 duh. and a person very close to me said, you know what, you're a lot like that. I said, I am not. I said, yes, you are. Now, that didn't make me feel all warm and fuzzy. (laughs) But it made me think. It made me look. Because sometimes you don't see. And you need somebody who loves you enough without agendas who wants the best for you to speak into your life and touch on the blind spots that we don't see. And we need to be open to hear them. Not the old religious, well, bless God, God will tell me if I'm wrong. Well, if I really believe I'm right, I'll never hear his voice to tell me I'm wrong. That's just the truth of it. Now, we need each other. That's the beauty of the body of Christ. That's why there's so many offenses and, and so much strife because we don't know how to handle stuff. Remember, we're adulting. <laughs> so tonight, I really want to give you two examples in Scripture that actually show you that God has sourced you from the beginning for everything your life. God loves you so much, he put everything in you that you needed at birth. And over the years, because of wrong teaching and different stuff in Christianity, of of our belief systems, whatever the reason, we're always asking God to add something, where God has given us everything. Now, God says, I want to bring to birth some of the stuff I put in you that you haven't used yet. You know, a, a pastor of mine, a great man of God, I got saved under and phenomenal, powerful man of God. He said, the world, he said, we don't need more money. We need more ideas. This week, I'm going to show you. I pray that we're going to go through and you're going to realize that you are sourced right at the very moment that you don't need to add one thing. You need to ask God to birth. That's why you need someone to coach you and speak into you, to ask you questions that you don't even know that you had an answer for. My passion is the walk of transformation. And by transformation, I'm not talking about the, 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 the way we were taught like so many years ago. If you confess, if you confess, if you confess, I am a child of God, I am loved, I am loved. You know, it's amazing. Uh, Dr. Uh, Carolyn Leaf, um, a phenomenal 
uh, speaker, but also a surgeon and a real doctor. She didn't just get a doctor's certificate on the computer. She actually operates as a doctor. But she has a phenomenal understanding of the mind and the physical makeup of the mind. And she said, when you confess something and say something that runs different to your core belief inside, she said, you do your body harm. If, if, if your inner self doesn't feel love, then you can't be convinced that you are loved. And we're told, now I'm going to fix this by confessing, I am loved, I am loved, I am loved. She said that that difference brings harm to your physical body inside. She said, what we need to do is choose our words wisely to marry. I am on a journey to know that I am so loved, which is truth in my inward parts. It's not a conflict, it's truth. That I'm going forward, I'm learning that I am loved, it's truth. It's not a dogmatic statement that totally opposes my inward core belief system. I, I don't know about you, but I tried all that. It didn't transform one thing. It gave me a headache and I felt good till the first bad thing happened. Then the balloon popped and we were back to where we started from. <laughs> I was anyway. I want you to get something out of this tonight. I, I hope you do. Because you have phenomenal potential in you that has not even been tapped yet. You have ideas and plans and dreams that haven't even been awakened yet. See, we, we like to say, I, I can tell you now, the days ahead are, can be phenomenal days God will give you the days, but if I, I, the one who make them bitter or better, I'm the one who will cause them to be phenomenal, fulfilled days or days. God will add days on what I do with my days. Starts here. The first scripture I want to go to tonight is, and this is, again, it's all transformation process let me just say i have so much faith and so much respect for some of these leaders in this arena zig ziglar a phenomenal man of god phenomenal he's home with jesus now you know that man pointed to christ in every motivational sermon i i shook his hand like to say I met him you know name dropping but no we just shook hands but anyway but shook his hand so it's really special and so we, but he pointed people to the nature and the way of Christ every time and wherever he was in America he flew back to his home church for Sunday church He wouldn't just go to the local church he was at. He flew back wherever he was so he could go to his local church, his local pastors, his local people, his local friends, and celebrate the Lord's Day with them. I think that's a phenomenal man of God. I watched John Maxwell sit up there and he said, he, he choked up with tears and he said, I would give anything and everything to see a nation transformed amazing to me and these people have been asked by leaders of nations to go and transform people's thinking not to preach but let me tell you it's all the word of god Okay, first one, Psalm 139, sourced for success 
from conception. I want you to remember that when you leave tonight. Write it down or write it down here. Think about it. Psalm 139. And I didn't print it properly. Who knows? See, this psalm, we used to tell people that they're valuable, that they're accepted. In Psalm 139, and when we look at God's talking about creation, David's talking about how God created him. And there's so many good verses in it, but we look at verse 13. It says, For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb, and I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts toward me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I'm still with you. See, who believes that God put that in the Bible just for David? He didn't put it in there just for Christians because you can't be a Christian in the womb. He put it in there for the reader, didn't he? This book. And if we believe that God is in creation, if we believe that God is in the conception and birth, if we believe that life comes from God, we believe this psalm and we believe that every single life Born has the thumbprint of God on it. Regardless of where they are today, regardless of whether they're ISIS, Muslim, regardless of whether they're Hindu, regardless of whether they're an atheist, every single person is born with the thumbprint of God. And then we are born into our circumstances and into our life And then we learn usually what we're not. We learn how to fear, how to mistrust, how to do all of those things. But we start off right there as a heavenly being with the creative majesty of heaven in us. And God put everything in that precious little seed, your personality, your eyes. I was going to say your hair color, but who knows today? (laughs) He put everything in there. And then when we're born into our circumstances, we learn this trusting little child all of a sudden gets hurt, gets abused. And now instead of embracing, they run and they hide and they fear. Why? They would learn that. They taught that in a fallen world. They come out God-centered and then they learn that their faith might be Muslim and their faith might be something else. They come into the faith of the household, whatever that might be. And then later on in life they grow and, and some people have a great life and some people learn to be afraid of everything and everybody, of authority, of all of these things and we get saved and all of a sudden then Jesus comes.